guys, it's your girl Tisa. I know you guys have been waiting for another recap of Love and Hip Hop New York. I've been real busy the last few days, but I had to get this recap out to you guys. So I hope you guys have your teacups ready. Let's go ahead and get ready to sip, honey. Hell, how you doing? So anyways, in the opening scene, we pick up where we left off. We have Dirty Feet Pete, Undercover Hood Rat Tara, and Amina Caterpillar. And Amina's going off, and she's yelling at Peter, and she's basically telling Peter, you know, he needs to make a decision. She's, you know, she's mad. She's done with this. And Dirty Feet Pete is sitting there looking like, I don't know what to damn do. You know, he is such a damn mess. And Tara, honey, she tried to call herself coming for Amina. She was like, bitch, you ruined my family. You ruined my life. You want my life so bad that you have to cheat with my husband. And I'm sitting there watching this shit like Tara are you for real bitch you've been a side piece for the past 14 damn years since the 90s you've been Peter's side piece okay like Amina said Peter done had long term relationships he was in a relationship way before Tara ever came around and she enjoyed being the side piece and now she does not like the fact that she's being replaced by Amina Caterpillar so to me Tara has no room to talk about anybody being a side piece being a jump off or being a hoe she needs to look in the mirror and the fact that Peter chose to marry Amina says a lot and the fact that Peter is married to Amina but didn't marry Tara after 14 years that says even more moving on to the next so scene. the next thing we have DJ selfish honey and he's planning this big romantic dinner for Yorma because you know she's real upset after she found that ring and he's trying to make it up to her now isn't me or does Yorma look like a bootleg ass Amanda from loving hip-hop Hollywood okay she really reminds me of Amanda so anyways Yorma gets there and she's still in her feelings and she's saying that you know she really feels like she can't trust him but she wants to know what he has to tell her so DJ DJ Selfish is like, you know what, I really want to be with you, you know, stop tripping off of that ring, you know, I want to take us out, and she's like, you know what, this is nice, but there's no one here, like, nobody knows that we're together. DJ Selfish devises a plan to basically invite Yurma to Mariah birthday party, and he promises that he's going to floss in front of everybody, and he's going to let the world know that Yurma is his girlfriend. So now she's all boosted, she's ready to let bygones be bygones, she has her damn champagne glass up, hi honey, time out some damn salute, I was like, bitch, you need to get your, because he's so called claiming you in public does not mean that he really has respect for you and does not mean that he's not cheating on you with other women how you doing moving on to the next so thing. the next thing we have miss no money okay we're not gonna call her miss mo money we're gonna call her miss no money all right no money and no lyrical skills was so damn ever so anyway she decides to go meet up with yandy and yandy you know is taking time out to meet with her you know she's really upset by how Ra keeps playing her and how Ra's acting funny towards her and playing favorites and yandy's kind of surprised like you know i don't understand like why y'all are going to Ra you know what I mean to be as manager and Yandy feels like you know what it seems like nowadays anybody can just claim the title as manager but they really don't know what they're doing and I definitely agree with Yandy like I said Rashida Ali done had more fucking gigs on Love and Hip Hop New York than anybody I've ever seen her ass done went from a shoe connoisseur to a motherfucking shoe retailer to now she's managing artists I'm gonna need her to have several damn seats Every damn season, Ra Ali is doing something different. So I agree with what Yandy had to say about her. But I do find it funny that Yandy is so willing to take on Miss No Money, but yet and still she was so mad at Young B that she was willing to walk away from Young B. But yeah, she has no problem taking on Miss No Money and Unsexy Lexi. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have our favorite white female rapper, honey, after V Nasty. We have Mariah Lynn. And Mariah Lynn is a trip. She kind of got bars, though. She can kind of spit. But the part that had me confused when she was like this. I bust my money gun in on these bitches. I bust my money gun in on these bitches. I bust my money gun. And I was like, bitch, stop. We heard it the first time. That part was whack. I'm going to need you to change that lyric up because it makes no damn sense. You bust your money gunning on these bitches, girl, bye. Anyways, so she's in the studio rapping her heart out. And DJ Selfish is there. And basically, he's there to, you know, talk to her and chop it up with her because he hasn't seen her in a few days. And he feels like she kind of dropped the ball at Gwen Fest. He felt like she should have came harder. She kind of stumbled a bit. Maybe she was kind of intimidated by the other black rappers there. But, you know, Mariah Lynn, you know, kind of agrees that, yeah, she kind of messed up. But she promises that the next time she's going to go hard or go home. So then DJ Selfish decides to ask her about her birthday party. And Mariah Lynn lets it known that Broke Panties is going to be there hosting her party he's basically gonna be the MC of her party so now DJ Selfish is giving her the side eye like hold up now what you and broke pennies got going on and she's like that's none of your business you know that's you know my friend we go way back but in her confessional she basically confesses that broke dollars old chicks you know don't bother her she knows he's been around the block but when they want to get down they do them and it's nobody else's business and I'm sitting there like you know what I get an Erica Mena vibe from her I feel like she's channeling Erica Mena you know what I mean? But while she's in her confessional talking about, you know, wanting that old thing back from broke panties, 
All of a sudden, Cardi B's ass comes busting in the studio, honey, super loud, super ghetto, and super ratchet. And she's like, what's up? You know what I mean? What's going on? You know, I'm here in the studio this evening. You know, DJ Selfish, and I don't understand. Got this light-skinned girl here. You know, she cute and everything, but you know, this supposed to be my session. And I'm sitting there looking like, okay, first of all, when did Mariah Lynn become light-skinned? She looks white to me, honey. No, Cardi B, bitch, you're light-skinned. Mariah Lynn is white, okay? Thank you. So anyway, so she's there, and DJ Selfish She's introducing Cardi B to Mariah Lynn. And Mariah Lynn is like super happy. She's coming off like a groupie. Like, girl, I be seeing you on Instagram. I be seeing all your posts. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to meet you and everything else. So while she's so boosted by Cardi B, she asks Cardi B, well, if you're in the studio, you know, what you doing here in the studio? And Cardi B's like, oh, what you ain't know? I'm a rapper. You know, I came here to work in the studio. DJ Self is inviting me. We're supposed to lay down some tracks. So then, you know, Mariah Lynn is like, oh, okay. So you're a rapper too. Well, how come you weren't at Gwen Fest? So now DJ Selfish is kind of mad because he feels like, you know, Mariah Lynn is doing too much talking. It's the reason why he didn't invite Cardi B to um, Gwen Fest because he knew his girl Yorma was there. So then Mariah Lynn decides to take upon herself to invite Cardi B to her birthday party. You know, so now DJ Selfish is feeling like Mariah Lynn is doing just way too damn much. But all it is is that basically he's worried about getting caught up. This whole scene was just so contrived, it was funny. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have our favorite reality TV couple, honey, Remy Ma and Papoose. And they're going on a double date with Yandy and Mendeecees. And Yandy's saying that Remy Ma and Mendeecees, they've known each other for like 10 years. It's obvious the industry is very small, not only in Hollywood, but definitely in New York. It's like everybody has known each other for, you know, several years in the industry. And so basically, you know, um, Yandy was saying that, you know, while you was down, anytime you drop music, you know, the streets was feeling it. You know, we ready for another Remy Ma album. You know, we ready for you to drop some hits and Papoose was like, man, I keep telling her, man, I keep telling her, like, the people are ready, they're ready to hear her, and then all of a sudden, Remy Ma's like, you know what, shh, be quiet, and I was like, okay, well, damn, you know, did she just check the hell out of him, I'm like, she's kind of mean to him, and this dude, like, literally idolizes her, you know what I mean, he's so in love with her, and she just checked him, and he literally got quiet, and, you know, stood straight up, I was like, you know, that I just, that scene was kind of weird to me, but then Remy Ma says that, you know, when you're going to go away to go do time, you don't want to think about photo shoots and dropping albums. You know, especially when you come back from doing time, you just want to get reacclimated to the world. And she said the hardest thing was like leaving her son because at the time her son was seven years old. And now that she's out, her son is 14. And at times he acts like he's okay with her having been gone all that time. But then when they get into it, the first thing Jace does is throw it up in her face and, you know, makes her feel bad as a mother. You know, and at the end of the day, that's what teenagers do. Hell, you can do something for them. You can buy them all types of shit. And then they'll act brand new when you ask them to take out the trash and you know do certain things that's teenagers so she shouldn't take it personal because real talk she wasn't there so he has every right to feel kind of angry feel upset that his mom was away for six seven years and you know Mendeecees feels the same way that you know he doesn't want to lose any more time with the kids because when he did that year he missed so much of Amir's life he missed so much of little Mendeecees life and his other child that they don't never talk about on the show but if y'all don't know Mendeecees cheated on Yandy and got somebody else pregnant so he has a son in between little Mendeecees and Amir there's a little middle child so basically he missed all these kids, you know, growing up for that year. I'm so concerned about the emotional aspect of what you're dealing with. Like I remember um, even Mendes and I, we have broken up for a while and um, he started dating someone else. And he came back and told me that person got pregnant and I th thought my world was over. This was before Amir. I said, we don't have any children together. You know, let's be apart. And he, I mean, consistently, no, no. And was very, very clear, like, this is where I want to be. So the whole situation is crazy and then Papu says, you know what, this is love, man. This is real black love. And, you know, I kind of felt weird about that when he said that this is real love. You know, I kind of felt like it's a sad day and age when real black love is considered holding someone down while they're going to go do several years in prison. Not, you know, six months in jail, not a few weeks in jail, several years in prison. And equating holding someone down as black love to me really didn't really sit well with me. 
while I love the fact that she's out and he has so much love for her, I don't think that people should be going into situations where, you know, if my man gets locked up, I'm going to hold him down. I'm sorry. I'm not about to waste my youth, honey. Your ass get locked up. I'm out. I got other shit to do. You know what I'm saying? If you really love me, your ass would not be doing shit to go to jail. Point blank, period. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Mrs. No Money, honey, and unsexy Lexi, boo. So Mrs. No Money is sitting here calling Lexi her daughter. She's like, what up, Zada? What's going on, Zada? Come on over here, Zada. So Miss Unsexy Lexi's upset. She's like, you know what? I get really tired when this girl calls me daughter. You know what I mean? She acts like she's way above me or like she's my mama or something. And I don't understand that at all. You know what I mean? That's like, I guess maybe it's another word for like how dudes call each other son. You know what I mean? But I've never heard a girl call another chick daughter, especially when y'all's about the same age so I thought that was kind of disrespectful as well so anyways Miss No Money invited Lexi out to basically explain to her that she went to go meet with Yandy and that she feels like you know and she feels like Ra is not a good manager for her she feels like Ra is playing favorites Robbie calling Lexi on some you know ha 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 key 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 type shit but then when it comes to her Ra got the screw face she act like she don't like her and she's not feeling that she feels like Ra is causing a divide in their group and you know sexy Lexi's like you know what I think you're taking things too personal I think you and Ra need to really sit down and talk and hash everything out like adults because you know she's done a lot for us she's brought us a long way and I'm thinking to myself what the hell has Raw Ali done for y'all I ain't seen y'all on shit else besides loving hip-hop New York so I'm trying to figure out what our Raw has done for them so anyway she finally gets no money to agree to meet up with Raw Ali moving on to the next scene so the next scene we have Mendeecees and he's doing his community service he's talking to a bunch of teens and he's letting everybody know about how he was raised without a father and how he wanted quick money but he wants people to not follow in his footsteps he does not want the next generation out there selling drugs and doing what he did you know so I felt like it's really good that he's doing community service and he's trying to talk to the youth and he's trying to you know basically make amends for all the wrongs that he's done and then he also sits down to talk to little man DC's and, and he's so adorable and you know he's just basically talking to his son like you know what you know I gotta go away I don't know how much time I'm gonna have yet but I'm gonna be gone for a while and I just want you to know no matter what people say you're my son I love you you know I never wanted this for us I'm I'll always be there for you the best way I can and you know you can tell little man DC's wants to break down but he's just trying to be strong for his father you know he's about 10 years old and you know he's asking his dad you know what made you want to start talking to kids and you know start motivating kids to do the right thing and you know they're kind of having like a father-son moment which I thought was really really sweet but it's really sad that he's going to be away from this little boy for the next eight years you know by the time he comes out little man is going to be 18 years old so you know I hope guys take what man is saying on this show as a lesson that if you really want to be in your children's life and you really want to raise them you have to do the right thing and stay out of jail because when we make mistakes as black people there's no forgiving us they throw the book at us you know what i'm saying i'm not saying it's okay that he was selling dope but you got folks out here doing a lot worse we have a little white boy ethan couch he done sat here and killed four people drunk driving and he got 10 years probation this dude was moving weight and he got eight years Lucky for Mandeces, that's all he got because he was really looking at 20 years. So the whole situation is crazy. The justice system is definitely not for us. So if you don't want to get caught up in the justice system, keep your ass out of jail. Stop doing dirt and stop doing dumb shit that gets you locked up. Moving on to the next scene. So in the next scene, we have Amina Caterpillar, honey, and her twin sister Jazz done flew in from Germany because Amina's having a mental breakdown. You know, thank God Amina has a fucking heart on her throat because I couldn't tell either one of them apart. Now I'm just playing. I think Jazz not only has a look out of the two of them, I think she's really pretty, but I also believe that she took all the common sense while they were in the womb because this whole situation with Amina Caterpillar and, and Dirty Feet Pete, a.k.a. Grandpa Bums, makes no sense whatsoever. So Amina finally breaks down into tells her sister that she's pregnant by PETA and that she doesn't know what to do and she's just so stressed and she's tired because everybody thinks that she got pregnant on purpose to try and keep PETA and that's not why she got pregnant. It's just something that happened. And I'm sitting here like this. Bitch, if you don't stop damn crying, you are a grown woman. You know what the hell it takes to get pregnant and what the hell it takes to not get pregnant. And obviously your ass can get pregnant being that you just had a child not even a year ago. You know, so why is she acting brand new like she don't know if I'm messing with Peter and I'm not using any protection, uh, there might be a little Peter in the works, you feel me? So I don't understand why she's acting brand new like she just has no idea how she could have gotten pregnant. You know, Mina is an idiot. At the end of the day, I don't feel bad for her. I don't feel bad for her tears. You know, 
now you want to cry because this man is clearly showing that he does not want you and does not want to be with you in his actions. But just the other day, you was talking about you'll never give up and that's your man and you're going to fight for your husband. So my thing is, which one is it? Do you want to be with Peter or do you really truly want to move on? You know, so I'm glad at least her sister's there for her because it couldn't have been me, honey. I'd have had to hurt her damn feelings because she just keeps doing stupid shit. She needs to go get her baby, you know what I mean, raise her daughter and do what she needs to do and leave Peter guns alone. Moving on to the next scene. So the next scene we have Ra Ali. And she's coming to check out BBOD, a.k.a. Busted Bitches on Decline. These girls cannot rap for anything in the world. Are we just going to ignore that shit? What the hell is a tata -lish? They was really saying this word like it was a new catchphrase. tata tata licious tata 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 licious tata tata licious tata 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 I'm like, what the hell? Would y'all stop? You know what I mean? They sounded crazy as hell. Neither one of these women could rap whatsoever. Neither one of them could dance. They have absolutely no stage presence. I don't know where the hell Mona Scott found these people, but she needs to send BBOD back to the damn drawing board, okay? So Ra Ali's there to talk to them. And once again, Ra's coming in. She kind of has an attitude, you know what I mean? And basically, they start to have their meeting and Sexy Lexi puts it all out there and that she wants them to sit down and talk about everything. So Miss No Money steps up and she basically says, you know what, Ra, I feel like you're playing favorites with us. I feel like, you know, you call Lexi on a personal basis. You talk to her all the time. But with me, you're always on your eyes. You always have an attitude. And Ra's like, you know what? Me and you are just not gelling. I feel like you don't know how to listen and you don't know how to take my advice. And then out the blue, I miss no money, decides to let Ra know that she went to go meet up with Yandy and that Yandy was giving her solid advice and that she feels like Ra is not as good as a manager as Yandy is. So now Ra's really upset. She feels like that's a betrayal. That's disrespect. How dare you go talk to Yandy, but yet and still in the same breath, you're not talking to me and I'm supposed to see your manager. She said, I don't care who it is. You don't go to nobody behind on my back and ask them for you know advice and tell them what's going on in our inner circle so now Roz will upset and then she decides to go on her confessional she's like first of all I don't know why she went to Yandy Yandy ain't done shit since Jim Jones you know what I'm saying but my question to Ra Ali is this okay first of all bitch who have you made pop in recent years it's okay we'll wait Nobody, bitch. What you talking about? How you gonna try and call out Yandy and you ain't made nobody damn pop? Point blank, period. People kill me trying to shade other people's accomplishments, but yet and still they ain't accomplished shit on their own. It ain't no different than people trying to throw shade on YouTube. Oh, this video sucks. Oh, you're fat. Oh, you're ugly. Then you click on their fucking page, they have an anonymous profile with no videos, no photos, no nothing, but you want to judge somebody else's hard work? I'm gonna need Ra Ali to have several damn seats trying to throw shots at Yandy. After talking shit in her confessional, Ra decides to tell the girls, you know what, I'm done. I'm walking away from this. You know, you guys are not loyal. Sexy Lex is like, well, hold on. What about our showcase? You're supposed to be putting together our showcase. How can you just walk away from this? And Ra's like, you know what, there is no more showcase. I'm done with this. My thing is, I believe in my heart of hearts there was never a showcase. Point blank, period. Anybody who would have put money and time into a showcase would not walk away from their group that they're supposedly managing that easily. It's not like Miss No Money went and signed with Yandy. She went to go talk to Yandy. So for Ra to get so up in her feelings that she's going to decide to walk away from a group that she's supposedly making money off, that she's supposedly, you know, managing, and that she supposedly has a showcase for, to me just lets me know she's full of shit and she didn't have nothing that works for these girls. These girls better find a new manager quick, fast, and in a hurry because Ra Ali is not it. Moving on to the next So in the next thing we have Mandisi's honey. He is dressed casket sharp, baby. He got on the suit, the tie, and everything else. He's getting ready to go to court to find out what his sentence is going to be. Yandy's all dressed up. You know, they're hugging with the kids. You know, it's a really sad and somber moment. Yandy's really upset. They got some black man babysitting all these kids. Her and Mandisi's end up leaving, and they get ready to go to court. You know, once again, I just can't take this storyline seriously because at the end of the day, she knew the type of dude she was talking to. She knew he had all this time hanging over his head, and yet and still, she chose to have two children with him. So at this point in time, like I said before, the only thing she can do is have this man's back and stay in the wind and wait for him while he gets out in another eight years. Moving on to the next scene. So in the last and final scene, it is Mariah Lynn's big birthday party, honey. Everybody and their mama's there. There's flowing, the lights are flashing. So she's really excited and DJ Selfish is there and he's there with Yuma and you know, 
Mariah Lynn's kind of surprised. Like, well, who's this? And, you know, DJ Self was like, oh, this is my girlfriend. You know, this is Mariah Lynn. So she, so Mariah Lynn's playing it off like, oh, okay, cool. You know, like I could have sworn he was hugging up on Cardi B, but okay, you know, no matter. So then all of a sudden, here comes Broke Panties, and Broke Panties is there. He comes and gives Mariah Lynn a hug, and, you know, he chops it up with DJ Selfish. And, you know, DJ Selfish is like, you know, what's up with y'all? You know what I mean? What's up with you, you know, hosting this party for Mariah Lynn? And Mariah Lynn feels like, you know what, DJ Selfish, now you're being kind of messy because I'm not calling you out the fact that you're messing with two different women. Don't worry about what me and Broke Pennies have going on. So her and Broke Pennies go to go walk off and they're sitting on the, they're sitting in the booth and they're talking and flirting with each other. And you know, she's asking Rich, you know, to touch her a little bit, and, you know, come a little bit lower down her leg. And she's like seriously flirting with him. And I'm just sitting here watching this. Like I'm gonna need her to have several damn seats. You know what I mean? First of all, Rich Dollars, he ain't got no type. Basic ass bitches are the only thing he like. Rich Dollars will go wherever there's a chick willing to accept him. He will holler at anybody. You know, this whole situation is a mess. I can't take them seriously. This man done went from messing with Erica Mena to her lesbian girlfriend, to, you know, Diamond Strawberry, to Monice on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, and now he's messing with her. I can't take neither one of these two seriously. So anyways, while they're flirting and being up in each other's face, all of a sudden, honey, here comes Cardi B. Cardi B says that her hosting gig ended early, so she couldn't miss this party for the world, as if she even knew Mariah Lynn. So Cardi B comes in there. She's like, you know, my outfit is popping. My hair is popping. I'm looking fly. What's up with you, girl? So they sit there and they hug each other and everything. And she says that she had tried to call DJ Selfish, but that he wasn't answering the phone. So then she was like, you know what? I'm going to find him. It's cool. You know, I'm here now. She was like, so as I'm at the party, I look to my left and I see DJ Self. And he's hugged up on some chick. So I go over there to go check him and, you know, find out what's going on. So now Cardi B goes over there and she's like, you know, what's up? And DJ Selfish has this stupid look on his face like, <gasps> like he's so shocked that she showed up to a party that she was invited to. This whole scene is a mess. So now you're must feel in some type of way because she's not liking the way Cardi B walked up and then her man's reaction to Cardi B. So she's like, okay, well, who is this? And Cardi B's like, oh, I'm, you know, Cardi B, how you doing? And Yorma's like, well, I'm his girlfriend, I'm Yorma. And Cardi B's looking like, what, you're the girlfriend? So now they start looking at each other crazy. DJ Selfish is smiling. He's loving the fact that these two women are fighting over him, even though he claims that he doesn't want them to fight over him. So now Yorma's looking at him like, what the hell's going on? And he's just sitting here stuttering, looking stupid as hell. And now Cardi B's like, you know what? This is my dude. You know, I'm fucking with him. So I'm just letting you know that you can't be his girlfriend because he ate me out last week. And she's like, what? Are you serious? You guys are sleeping together? Well, he did the same thing to me. So I'm sitting here like, this is some bird shit. How the hell is the side chick sitting there trying to go at the main chick? And then trying to fight the main chick. Like, you the side chick, Cardi B. Like, what the hell? So then all of a sudden, Cardi B just reaches out and just clocks Shurma. And they just get the fighting. The whole situation is crazy. And the scene ends. And I tell y'all, this week's episode of Love and Hip Hop New York was so damn scripted and over the top. For the fact that Cardi B got an invite to Mariah Lynn's party. And that DJ Self really thought that he could have her entertained doing something else. And that she wouldn't show up. This whole thing was a scripted ass mess, but it kept me entertained. How you doing? So anyways, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this week's episode of Love and Hip Hop New York. What did you guys think about the episode? What was your favorite part? Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. Hey, you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.